Hello, this is our video solution to problem 8b, the final problem from Super Quiz 2. And here again, we're going to be computing a Laplace transform uh, in order to, or many Laplace transforms, in order to solve an initial value problem. Uh, this one at first looks a little bit easier because it's only a first order differential equation. On the other hand, the forcing function uh, is given by just a graph, right? We actually have to work out this forcing function. Thankfully, all of our work uh, with the unit step functions should pay off here. So in fact, that's how I'm going to start this. Uh, let's, let's write down f of t in terms of unit step functions. So first, we see that as you would head off to negative infinity, this just is always 1. So we can start with a 1. And then something happens at 2. So let's write that u2. And what happens? Well, it, it turns off, right? We actually get minus u2. It goes from 1 down to 0. And then at 4, it turns back on. So we'll get a plus u4 of t. Okay, well, there's our, our function. And we're going to use the Laplace transform, though. Uh, so we're going to apply L to this equation. And so what are we going to get? We're going to get uh, S times the Laplace transform of Y minus Y of 0 plus 6 times the Laplace transform of Y is equal to the Laplace transform of F, which is the Laplace transform of 1 minus U2 of T plus u4 of t. OK, well, some nice things. y of 0 is 0. So this bit is just 0. And I can, on the left-hand side, factor out an s plus 6. So I have ly times s plus 6 equals, and what about the right-hand side? So the Laplace transform of 1, that's easy enough. That's 1 over s. Uh, for u2 of t, well, we're using the second shifting theorem here. So by the second shifting theorem, this is going to be minus e to the 2t, uh, negative 2t, over s. And u4 of t, this will be, now we have a plus e to the negative 4t over s. Well, at least everything's over s. That's not too bad. Okay, let's see. So I want ly, so I'm going to divide by s plus 6. And when I do that, I get 1 over s times s plus 6. And, well, you know what, maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe it's good to keep these other ones uh, together or something, right? So let's see. Um, we're going to have minus e to the negative 2t plus e to the negative 4t all over s times s plus 6. Now, the reason I didn't combine all of these is, is this one is just so special. I feel like I could get this pretty easily. Now, uh, the way I want to attack this is sort of uh, in two steps to make it easier. The first is to just assume I already knew the answer to uh, finding a Laplace transform for 1 over s times s plus 6. So just on the side, let me just define h of s to be 1 over s times s plus 6. And little h of t has the property that when you take its Laplace transform, you get big H. Okay, so this little h, right, is the Laplace, the inverse Laplace transform of h of s. Okay, well, let's just assume I knew what that was. So I could rewrite this just as h of s plus negative e to the negative 2t, and I, I might as well break it up even, h of s plus e to the negative 4t h of s. Okay, so why is this going to be good? Well, if I knew what little h was, then of course I'd be able to write this guy, right, just as the Laplace transform of h. Fine. What about this thing over here? Well, that, boy, doesn't that remind you of something from that Laplace transform table? And, ah, uh, yes, that's the second shifting theorem. So the second shifting theorem says when you have some exponential times the Laplace transform of a function, and heck, h is the Laplace transform of little h, then I can rewrite this. So forget about this negative out front. This is going to be the Laplace transform of 
Okay, you take the inverse Laplace, so that'd be little h, and you evaluate it at t minus c. So in this case, my, my c is 2, so t minus 2. And then you hit it with u2. And similarly over here, this is the Laplace transform of little h of t minus 4 times u4. And so this is going to end up being, when I take the uh, inverse Laplace transform, y is going to equal little h plus h of t minus 2 u2 of t. Okay, maybe I'll write this as h of t for consistency. Uh, oh, and there's a minus here, right? Can't forget that minus. Uh, plus h of t minus 4 u4 of t. Okay, great, I'm done, right? Well, not quite because I did leave out that one little piece where I had to know what little h was. Okay, so let's work out what little h is. So we know we can break this big h up via partial fractions. And this is, the, this is an easy partial fractions, right? Because, okay, to get this constant over s, I just plug 0 into the rest of it. So 1 over 0 plus 6 is 1 over 6. And to get the co constant over s plus 6, I put negative 6 in for s, so I'll get negative 1 over 6. Okay, and what is this the Laplace transform of? Well, it's 1 6 times the Laplace transform of 1. Oh, okay. That's pretty good. It's just the Laplace transform of 1 6. Minus 1 6 times, well, this is almost the same thing. There's just that shift, right? So this would be e to the negative 6t. And I beg your pardon, of course, we want the Laplace transform of that. Okay, so this is equal to 1 sixth times 1 minus e to the negative 6t, and of course we have this Laplace transform we can put all around it. Okay, well little h is the inverse Laplace transform, so it's just 1 sixth times 1 minus e to the negative 6t. Okay, so if you wanted to plug this back in, Ooh, you do a lot of copying, right? So you do a sixth, one minus e to the negative 6t, minus, okay, now you need to evaluate h at t minus two. So this will be one minus e to the negative six times t minus two. And then we have a u2. And then finally, uh, again, we have a one sixth, and now we're evaluating at t minus four. So e to the negative six times t minus four, times a u4. All right. If you got to this step, of course, where you said what h of t is and, and didn't want to plug everything back in, I'd understand. It's kind of boring. All right. Uh, this can be very helpful uh, when you notice you have sort of this constant thing setting up. And, and you, I, I think it could be very difficult if you don't maybe replace this by an h of s just because you start doing all this partial fraction work and you just it's going to blow up right all over the place. Um, and, and maybe you might miss that. Hey, look, I, I really just have right the second shifting theorem here. So, so try this trick in the future and uh, you, you might be surprised at, at how much it simplifies matters. All right. Well, congratulations. You made it through another super quiz.